Hello book lovers and welcome back to Craig's Book Thoughts. Last time round I reviewed the amazingly epic Sin City by Frank Miller and I was thinking to myself how can I top that? How can I better what I reviewed in the first two episodes? Well I had a little think about it and episode three has now been dedicated to the comic series Saga. For those of you that don't know what Saga is it's an epic space opera slash fantasy comic series written by Brian K. Vaughan and illustrated by the amazingly talented Fiona Staples. Think Star Wars, but taken to a whole new level. This is very explicit, very graphic, very inventive. I think Brian Vaughan from the start uh, set out to make this comic series as wild as possible and he's actually been quoted as saying that he didn't want this made into a film. The popularity of it has been incredible, it has exploded, everyone is loving it, including myself. I'm very proud to say that I own all the single issue comics. It is available in trade paperback as well, uh, different size volumes, but as I said, I'm very proud of the fact that I actually own every single issue. So yeah, let's get into it. So as you can see, this is issue one of the comic, and the idea behind Craig's Book Thoughts is just to let you all know of the books that I love and the books that you should check out. I won't be writing any negative reviews of any books that I read. Saying that, I don't want to give away any spoilers. I want to give you just enough information so you can go away, do a bit of research yourself and hopefully pick up these books. Um, as some of the uh, viewers of the last two episodes have done, uh, they have gone on to read Sin City and hopefully have enjoyed it. So if you have enjoyed the Sin City runs, please leave a comment on my previous videos. So the plot. It centres around a husband and wife duo called Marco and Alana. They're from different extraterrestrial races and those races are actually at war with each other. Uh, they flee the authorities uh, from both sides of the war and they actually conceive a child. This child is a hybrid between the two races and there is uproar within the galaxy. This is unheard of. This child to some is an abomination. To some she is a blessing and a gift. Everyone wants to get their hands on this child uh, and at its core it's basically as I said a husband and wife who will do anything to look after their daughter. So this is how issue one starts off with Alana looking rather angry, looking in pain and she's saying, am I shitting? It feels like I'm shitting. I think that gives you a pretty good idea of how this series is going to go from the very start. There's a lot of shock value. Um, again, for a very mature audience, there's a lot of sex, a lot of violence, a lot of bad language, including the C word, which is very, very naughty. But this is a good kind of indication of how the comic is going to go. And also a good indication of Fiona's art style. It's very digital. Uh, she does everything on a tablet and then colours it herself. She's a one-woman army. She is incredible. The team of her and Brian just come together so well. This is the art style that will feature throughout the series and I think it's amazing. So here is the abomination herself. This is Hazel. As you can tell, she has tiny, tiny little horns, uh, as does her father Marco. And she does have wings as well, as per her mum. You can see a boob. On this page, uh, she's trying to breastfeed Hazel. She's not having any of it. Uh, so yeah, this is a few pages in, and I was like, "Whoa, okay, this series is gonna be insane." Uh, it just gets so so much better. Every single cell is beautifully illustrated, and the story and the characters just grip you from the start. So I'm going to break it down into the separate characters, starting with the main family in the series. As you can see on the front cover of this issue, this is Alana. She is the female lead in this series. Um, she is Marco's wife and obviously Hazel's mother, as we have seen. Am I shitting? It feels like I'm shitting. She is a native to the planet Landfall. Uh, and like all Landfallians, she has wings. After joining the planet's war um, against the Rethas, she was reprimanded for cowardice um, and for hesitating to kill civilians. She she has a conscience, she has a soul, she's also very badass, she's very strong-willed and determined. As you can see there, she's just chilling out on an engine of a ship, as you do. So this is Alana. 
So once Alana is reprimanded, she is redeployed to the planet Cleave. She becomes a prison guard on Cleave, and this is where she meets Marco. We see this as a series of flashbacks later on in the series. And again, it is really good to see how these characters first came together, the animosities between the two races, and you think, how can these people fall in love and, and have this baby, this monstrosity, where, you know, at the start, they hate each other, this violence, and she's really horrible to him, because she's scared. She doesn't want to be a part of this war. She's very reluctant to fight. Like I said, she has a soul. She she doesn't want to do it. Uh, she meets Marco. She finds out what an incredible person Marco is. And they fall in love. So this is Marco. And Marco is from Landfall's Moon called Wreath. Uh, he doesn't look that awesome in the sense that a woman would fall in love with him in this image. This is him as a war veteran. He is very violent, he's got a very violent past. These um, creatures can actually summon magic as well, so that's something else, as well as the horns. They're a very unique race, uh, perfect for fighting, perfect for destroying people and other aliens and other animals, as you will see throughout. But he starts to develop a conscience. He doesn't want to do it anymore, and he makes a vow to himself that he will never fight again. He will never use violence against any living person because his entire life through this war has been consumed with violence. He doesn't want to do it anymore. So that's what Alana sees in him, and she brings out his best side. As I said, they fall in love, and they make this baby called Hazel. So I've just added a picture of Hazel to my right, and... Brian K. Vaughan uses a very good device in bringing her into the story. She's born in the very first issue, so obviously she's going to be a baby. She can't talk at this stage. Like I said, she has horns, she has wings, and she is seen as this abomination in the galaxy. But she narrates quite a lot of the story from the start. This is really clever um, because you see her obviously narrating the story as an older child, and she's looking back on how this whole saga started and it's really good to see her point of view you don't need to see her you you don't see a lot of her in adult form until later on so she spends most of the first few issues as a baby growing up with this war around her everyone's petrified everyone needs to keep her safe so she narrates and it's a really good insight into her character it's just a really cool device because um Fiona uses quite sort of childlike handwriting, so you know exactly when it's Hazel narrating. You have no doubt in your mind that it, it's Hazel, and these are her thoughts, and she's looking back on how her parents met. So then they start to introduce different characters. This is Isabel. She is a ghost, as you can see. Her entrails and cuts are all over the place. She's a very cool character. She's also from Cleve, and she gets involved with, with Marco and Alana, and she makes a deal in order to save Marco's life. Again, not a spoiler, that there's a lot of death and near-death experiences in this. Um, she wants to go away with them. She wants to get off the planet. In order for her to do that, she has to bond with Hazel. I think this is a very, very cool way of keeping this character around, because she's now bonded with this young girl, and she manifests herself through the daughter, so they reluctantly make this deal whereby Isabel becomes part of the team. She features quite heavily at the start. She kind of tails off towards the end, but she's still a very cool character, still kind of sassy, and it is still <laughs> really weird to see a ghost with no legs and just guts hanging out everywhere. But this is Saga. Literally go into this expecting the most amazingly depraved scenes you can imagine because it is just fantastic. Every single page shocks you. You turn a page and it's either double page spread or single cells, and you look at it and go, what is going on? What was going through their minds at the time? But yeah, another great character. So this is Isabel. So this fine looking chap is a character called Prince Robot 4. He is a member of the royal family of the Robot Kingdom of course. He is assigned by Landfall as the primary pursuer of Alana and Marco. So he is set out to kill them, to kill Hazel, to wipe them off the face of the earth. Uh, he is another awesome character, very strong, very sassy. I love, I love the robot royal family and the robot kingdom. They are just so cool. You see so many different types of robots, some with 
uh, high-tech TV heads. They're all family of very sort of plush and high-tech, as you would imagine. Then there are janitor characters with really broken down and battered TV heads. Just such a clever, clever concept. He is obviously set out to kill Marco and Alana, so we see him quite a lot throughout this series. He also has a wife who's pregnant with their first child, so it's kind of a double father and child story. You get to see his troubles and struggles with, with obtaining his child, and there's a nice sort of bond there and a nice link between Alana and Marco's child and his child as well. So this is Prince Robot 4. He is awesome. So this is another character looking to pursue Alana and Marco. He is a bounty hunter called The Will. Uh, he's a freelance bounty hunter hired by the Reese High Command. He has been ordered to kill Marco and Alana but bring Hazel back alive. That is his mission. We follow him as a side story as well, which is really good because you don't just see Marco and Alana and how they need to look after Hazel. You you get to see these other characters and these other storylines within the overall saga, which is really cool. My favourite character, which I'm going to talk about next, accompanies the Will on his mission, and that is Lion Cat, as you can see in this cover. Lion Cat... I love this character as much as that yellow bastard, just because she is so absurd. This is a huge female cat. She is blue, as you can see, and she has the ability to tell when someone is lying. So even though she's not part of the conversation, she will just prowl around next to the will. She's always by his side. As soon as someone isn't telling the truth, she says, lying. And it just creases me. Every time I see it, I know it's coming, I think... That wasn't true, was it? Because in the last story, we heard otherwise, and she goes, lying. I oh, I just think it's brilliant. So I just need to show you some of the stills in this, some of the splash pages and cells, because Fear and Staples' art is just incredible. This is Lion Cat, as I said, saying lying to some weird alien. Get used to aliens. Get used to boobies and bums and all of that other rude stuff, because it is featured throughout this series. That is Lion Cat. So this is the spread cover for issue 25. You can just see how amazing this artwork is. It obviously depicts a battle here between the two sides. I mean, yeah, come on. Fiona Staples does incredible work on covers. You can tell that the cover versions of her art are very rendered, very stylized. The less stylized in the actual comic they have less gradients on them they're more of a flat digital design but the effort that she puts into the curve covers are just amazing so this is another example from issue 25 uh, this creature here I won't explain what is going on between that creature's legs you're just gonna have to find out for yourself but, I mean, on every level, I just think it works really, really well. The colours, the textures, and just the storyline is just so absurd. The reason why this massive, massive gecko lizard type creature is squirting this yellow stuff from between its legs, you're just going to have to read and find out. But I thought that was a particularly good example of just the really bizarre storytelling coupled with this amazing artwork. I think it just works really well. So I just want to show you some other really, really cool covers again. This is issue 26, another really action-packed cover. She just does covers so well. She, some of her covers are very plain, and there's only one or two characters. Other times it's kind of a montage like what's going on here. And look who's at the top, Lion Cat again. I love it. Lion Cat, for me, um, is kind of like the Hodor character in Game of Thrones. He only says Hodor. Lion Cat only says Lion but you love these characters because they don't need to say loads and loads. They don't need to swear and curse and do all these ridiculous things. They just need to say one word, hodo or lying. Another cool cover. This is issue 29. Again, you would pick this up thinking it was a sort of superhero series. But it's not. It, all the characters have the potential to be superheroes. They have superpowers. They are from alien races. But, like I said, essentially the story is more of a family-orientated story within this war. Um, this is a good example of, of all the different creatures that you can see. There are so many different characters. Uh, I could kind of dedicate 
a video per character because they are so well developed and well drawn but I just wanted to tell you the main characters so that you know that you can follow the story knowing that they are you know featuring the most within the series uh, but this is a good example of some of the characters that are featured outside of Marco and Alana. So this is chapter 30 and I love that they actually segregate and section out these issues into chapters as opposed to issues. A lot of the single issue comics that I read, they are issue 1, issue 2, these are in chapters. A good example of a cover that doesn't actually feature a character. This is obviously a psychedelic flower, it plays a part in the story, but again, her art is amazing, she can draw anything basically and make it look very cool. Just wanted to show you as well. So there's Marco and Alana embracing for one of the first times. Yeah, I, I just think the art's incredible. It's very emotional, very poignant. So that is Saga in a nutshell. I've tried to cram in as much as I can in this short video. You have to check it out for yourself. You're a little bit too late to start on the single issues, especially if you want first prints. The first print of number one is going for about 60 to 70 pounds. Uh, it, for those of you that don't know, comics go in print runs. So the first print of issue one is always going to be the sought after issue. That is when everyone wants to get their hands on. These comic creators, they don't know which of the comics are going to sell particularly well. This one has, just like The Walking Dead and countless other series. This is blown up. So I would suggest getting them in trade paperback. They're very affordable, between sort of 10 and 15 pounds per volume. It normally collects about six stories. So they'll release six single issues of the comic and then they'll bring that out in a trade paperback so that you can read a more of a condensed story. A couple of friends of mine are actually doing that and they find it easier to actually read large chunks of the story um, because it's such a good story. You read a single issue and then you've got to wait a month and you're just like, come on, I need the next one. I need to know what happens because they always leave on a cliffhanger. The last page is more often than not a big splash page and it's like when seen, they might not even say anything, but you're just like, oh, you can't leave it on that cliffhanger. Absolutely brilliant. So Saga, published by Image Comics, my all-time favourite comic publishers. They publish so many titles that I like. They're an independent comic publishing company, which means that they produce content which is creator-owned. So unlike Marvel, these artists come to Image and they can promote their own comics. They own the rights to those comics. They can take these stories whatever direction they want to go in. And that's why I love Image Comics. So make sure you check out Saga. Make sure you check out Image Comics and see what else is available. You'll see a lot of the artists cross over in different series and works, work with different writers as well. Brian K. Vaughan is an absolute legend. Fiona Staples, absolutely incredible. Pick up Saga Volume 1. You will not regret it. Leave your comments below. Like and subscribe to my page as per usual. And I will see you next time. Stay cool.